I am Uatu, the Watcher. United Comics Universe. A universe for fans. From pages to pictures, we, we are, are comics. comics. Hey there again, it's Joan and Show. Got something I wanted to talk about here. One of my theories. And then I researched it, and it reminded me of something I already knew. That the Celestials hate the Watchers. I knew there was some Watchers Celestial conflict long ago, but I haven't read that comic in eons. I have no idea what it was about. But CBR.com, using it as a resource, found some information that sounds very interesting, which also means, you know, the Celestials coming up in Eternals. This means that we could see the Watchers again. And I still say they should take Stan Lee's face and make him a Watcher. They have the technology. Yes, it says number seven here of CBR. Which article is this again? Celestials, 15 facts that make Marvel Space Gods scary AF. And we know what that means. But moving, along, moving right along down here to number seven about the Celestials. It says they hate the Watchers. That is the title of this segment. The Watchers are a race of near infinitely powered cosmic beings who are somewhat similar to the Celestials. The Watchers first appeared in the Fantastic Four number 13, written by Stan Lee and penciled by Jack Kirby. They are technologically superior to just about any civilization to ever arise and they have sworn to observe, but not interfere with the development of the species across the universe. Because of their sworn oath of non-interference, they have come into direct conflict with the Celestials. This is ironic for them since their pact means that they can't interfere with the Celestials. So their ongoing conflict is conducted via third parties. Huh. The two races of nearly all-powerful space gods recently battled using gigantic versions of themselves, but their conflict was not conclusive. The Celestials coming up in Eternals hate the Watchers, therefore we could have an appearance from the Watchers in Eternals. I'd pay to see that. Go ahead and take my money. Can you say epic cosmic battle with eternal beings of vast knowledge and power across the cosmos? throwing and hurling planets and stars and moons and black holes and anything they can control used as a weapon the watchers versus the eternals no the watchers and eternals versus the celestials that would be amazing thus thought you might want to know about that more about the celestials also coming from cbr.com Celestial's 15 facts that make Marvel's Space God scary AF. Jumping down to number five here. If I don't cover anything and you want to know about it, you gotta go to CBR.com and check it out. They have good information. Number six here. No. Number five here. The War with Gods. When you are a race of immeasurably powerful spirits, Space gods. It stands to reason that you might take up arms against a similar group of all powerful beings. That's what happened when the fourth host arrived on Earth in the 20th century to check the progress of their experiments, fearing that the Celestials would destroy Earth, the Eternals, and Asgardians joined forces against them. Asgardians! The Eternals were killed by betraying their creators, but Odin was able to augment his Odin force with the unstoppable destroyer armor and every Asgardian soul in existence. Wow, one armor to control them all. Just to battle the Celestials, and yet, even with all of that divine power, it did not work out for Asgard. Before the Celestial known as Arisheim, the judge, could pass judgment on the Earth and end Thor's life, Gaia often up the young gods to prove humanity's worth. Arasheim seemed pleased and decided the earth could continue existing for a little while. Hence, the fourth host departed the earth, leaving the Asgardians in ruin. Wow, could we see some of that in Eternals? That would be epic and amazing. 
Mighty as the Celestials are, somehow they are a mystery. They may be infamous, but yet they are still mysterious. Moving down to number four here. One of the more fascinating aspects of the Celestials is that their origin remains a mystery. Really. There have been several theories as to their beginnings thrown about in the comics over the years. But nothing has ever been confirmed. Some of the many theories regarding their origins include them being a race of beings left over from a previous universe, or that they were created and serve Thalcrum to maintain cosmic balance against the Horde. Wow, so if they're from a previous universe, you know what that means? Galactus! Galactus! He is from a previous universe. He's what's left over from the previous universe before it was restarted. That may come up in the Eternals film. That would be interesting. Whatever their origin may be, however, they are a race of engineers and scientists who have made it their mission to experiment on the various races of the cosmos for their own purposes. It is unlikely Marvel will shed much light on their origin as the mystery of the Celestials is what makes them such interesting and truly terrifying cosmic beings. If we all learned they were the dreams of Franklin Richards, it would take some of the threat of their being away. I don't totally agree with that, but I guess a little mystery may be good. I don't know. What do you think? If you think anything, or know anything, put it down below. Hey, and remember, we are comics. This is Jonin Show, and again, this is from CBR.com. That was the source material. Great place, great news, great information, great articles. This article is The Celestials, 15 Facts That Make Marvel Space Gods Scary AF. Want to know more about it? Go check them out at CBR.com. Jonin Show, and we are comics! must obtain the Makran Crystal, a Shi'ar gem of fantastic power. Next, you must acquire another object of great power, and it will take all your strength and skill. You must face the world eater known as Galactus.